what is the electron configuration for scandium, 21 protons, symbol SC? Now, the normal way to understand electrons historically for the last centuries is strict Aufbau, Aufbau being a German word for the filling order. And this has a set of electrons, subshells, by the numeric counts of 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on. And filled in these diagonal rows, the first shell being 2, the second shell being 2, then 6, the third shell being 2, then 6, the third shell being 2, strangely enough, then 10, then 6, 2, 10, 6, 2, 14, 10, 6, and so on. Now, these are abstract rules, okay? They're based upon numbers without a physical model. Further, these allow partial subcells filling. Third, the fill order is the S, the 2 first, then the 14F, then the 10 subshell D, and finally, the 6 subshell P. And finally, there's a rule that says the subshell D fills in the order with the D Ns, but the energy is N minus one. And so it's presented usually with that N minus one as the shell number. And similarly, the subshell F fills with N, but has the energy of N minus two. Now I wanna describe this based upon a physical model, okay? That physical model is that the nucleus and all of the subatomic particles have an axis. They have the whole particle, particle forces, and they have an axis that can cause things with angles relative to that axis being wave functions. So the natural status of any particle is that it has duality, both whole particle electrostatic force and axle forces like the weak nuclear force. Now, the thing about this model is that you get the same inclination that is a longitudinal angle. It's like a longitude on a globe at the same distance. And thereby, they all the electrons, if they settle around here, have the same energy. That's what makes them a longitudinal ring of electrons. Further, they come in two hemispheres because that gives them a balancing of one here, through the bones at 180 degrees, a second one here. The electrons are as far away as possible, but still net two acceleration attracted to the nucleus up to the Bohr radius. Now, my, this is my interpretation of the Nobel Prize winner, Bose, in his 1924 proof of statistical mechanics. Specifically, he called for a cylinder surface, electrons not coming together, but having something pulling them towards that and then bouncing off of each other as they are around this ring, creating these electron distributions. And two times for polarity in his paper, which again, I think is the hemisphere logic. That means that that very nice, beautiful graph two pages ago is not really that easy. Instead, it's in 3D. This is one hemisphere. Understand that up here, there's another hemisphere. And in this hemisphere, along the poles, that's the first place electrons wanna go. You get one, 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 one. Understand one with the one on the other hemisphere is the two. We had two, six, 10, 14. So this is just one hemisphere and that half are set by those balances at polyhemisphere pairs at 180 degrees in the opposite hemisphere for longitudinal symmetry and balance between the hemispheres. Then the subshell two builds, and then a second layer, because we are in hemispheres, can fit again offset by one half phase. So this line along the poles is a strict line of one shells in a line. But going this way, we have this interlacing which means that the distance here is less and thereby the energy. So when you get out here to shell seven, 
that really is the distance of shell four inside by two, the same as we did by those abstract strict off-bar rules. And similarly, if we have this one, that looks pretty much the same as the shell five energy. So the distance here is slightly longer in a atomic model than the distance outward. And that causes the logic that we find in the abstract strict off bow, but more importantly, in a 3D model that explains this based upon electron positions. And by positions, I mean the center of some electron distribution. Now, remember also that these are longitudinal ring. That's not just three sitting here, that's three sitting around a nice ring here and seven sitting around a big ring out here. And so these build in longitudinal rings in this format. Now, now let's build the Arno diagram of how that looks, okay? And there are specific rules then that apply in this three vector, electrostatic, strong, weak, two hemisphere, field acceleration, physics stack. First, there's two hemispheres, as I said. They try and build opposite each other. Now notice that this one are offset by half phase, so that this electron through the nucleus at 180 degrees always has a poly hemisphere pair. So nice balance, no electrostatic, no magnetic uh, action for that balancing. However, that means we have a, a rule that's different now than strict off ball, and that is only full shells allowed. There are no partials in an Arno diagram. Specifically, this comes from Bose's cylinder surface logic. You can't have that statistical mechanics and quantum behavior unless you have electrons in a cylinder surface. And if it's not that full set, well, they'll just fall in and it won't follow that behavior. Next, and also different, is there is a transitional equatorial subshell of three. You see the odds are exceptions to this off-bow filling rules. These always have to be evens, but what happens when you have an odd count molecule? Well, a ring at the equator is not multiplied by two. So thereby, whenever you have odd counts, you probably have an equatorial ring of three, then built with your pairs in full subshells. It's still full, but it's only an odd number. So that means the logic of an Arno diagram is tightest fit and preference for to go from the poles towards the equator because of weak force. So that means in any case, we can build elect stable electron subshells in configurations that are only full subshells towards the poles as tight as possible. Now, that also means though that these Ds are inside and the Fs are inside two layers as by the physical diagram we did before. So let's look specifically as I in this one for tw 21 symbol SC scandium. Now the strict AFBAL rule will say that you fill the two and then you get one of the 10. So you fill the two and then you get one of the 10. Now, Wikipedia has that same logic. The Arno diagram has no full subshells. In fact, you have none at the poles, okay? And nothing at the P's or the D's, but you can get three in the equatorial diagram, this being an exception. Again, that means that you have zero plus zero plus zero plus three, zero, zero, zero in the other hemisphere. So the three outer subshells, all full, all using full subshells, using the RO diagram for the shell four and five template. Understand it's different depending on which layer you're in. 
Now, what does this do to chemical properties? Why is my method, the Arnold diagram, better at explaining uh, electron behavior and configurations than the strict Aufbau or the current set of exceptions, okay, which is one of the hottest debated items in all of chemistry. Well, you see these different poles do different things. If those particles have an alignment towards the nucleus, that's the biggest count magnetically. If you have these, you have a fairly aligned magnetism, but they're gonna run into each other on the other side and it's not gonna be easy to for an electron to have electrical conductivity. But this shell, the equatorial subshell of three, will have high electrical conductivity. An electron can come in, replace this one, this one can jump out, boom, boom, boom. Lots of electrical conductivity, but the angle of that magnetic pole is at 90 degrees to the axis of the um, nucleus. That's the definition of equatorial. As such, that magnetic field of the electrons interferes with this overall field, meaning that magnetism is substantially less. So you can start to see how this physical model of electron configurations starts to give you hints about the chemical properties. Thank you.